Hello everyone, it's Scott, and welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Valve Skyblock Expert Mode. Yep, so at the end of the last episode, I got the Certus Course Wrench, but I, I didn't do anything with it. So, uh, the first thing I need to do to start working on AE2 is to get a energy acceptor up and going. So this is the block that's going to convert RF into AE power which uh, in itself is not that difficult of a formula. I just need to be able to make quartz glass. And I can do that by mixing nether quartz dust, in, in my case, with regular glass. And I just have um, <laughs> too much of it to... Uh, if, if you come over to this machine, you'll see that I, I'm actually overloaded with quartz. 24,500. And uh, so I've set up some formulas to kind of grind that down here. Um, so let's make a couple pieces of quartz glass. And what I'd like to do is set up the energy acceptor. And let's put this in the inventory and get our four uh, iron in here. <laughs> Done. Energy acceptor. And Let's grab a piece of uh, kinesis pipe. And the next thing I want to work on is a, uh, a crystal growth accelerator. So uh, it turns out that I'm going to need some fluix crystals um, and uh, pure fluix crystals. And I don't have any yet. So I'm going to build one of these to cut down the amount of time it takes to convert crystals into, uh, into uh, pure crystals. And so in itself, it's not that difficult, but I'm going to have to make my first uh, glass cable. So to do that, I'm going to need to make this quartz fiber. So let's uh, whip up another couple pieces of that. And so let's get that going. Now with six quartz fiber and a whole bunch of fluix, I should be able to make my first of the um, ME cables. So let's do that. At least grab eight pieces of that. And let's then build the crystal growth accelerator, which is going to need a fluix block, which should just be as easy as mixing all these together. All right. So actually, no, it's not. So I think it's only four. Yep, here we go. So let's grab a couple pieces of blocks. And then we'll make our crystal growth accelerator. And after the iron arrives, done. All right, so I'm going to do that a couple times because I'm going to need at least, I think, four to five crystal growth accelerators should give me the uh, optimum speed. So let me take care of that. All right, so third time's the charm. What I'm going to do is put the energy acceptor up here in the ceiling. So that's going to power that up. I'm going to place the, the blocks here in the floor, like so. And then um, what I'm going to do is place one, two, three, four, five, like this. and what I'm going to do is then drop in a water bucket and all my fluid seats. There we go. And so with that, those are eventually going to work their way up to, uh, to larger seats. But what we're going to do is hook this. Okay, so it looks like I can only hook this in through the top. So let me do a design like such. Let me grab that, knock these two pieces out. Now let's wire it up through the ceiling to connect to the uh, energy acceptor. There we go. So all of these should now be device online. Okay, so there's one more connection down here. So let's grab that. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this through the floor. One two, three. Okay, so all of the five devices should be online. 
And as such, that should be, well, increasing the speed of the fluid seeds if I would stop picking them up. So drop them all back in. In theory, that should help these guys accelerate quite nicely. All right, so that should polish off another of the uh, resonant machine frames. So let me grab one of those. And let's head back over here and see if I can build another inscriber. So drop that in the inscriber formula, two pistons, machine frame resonant, and a couple other gadgets. What am I missing? I'm missing a Certus Quartz Crystal, one of the pure crystals. Oh, and by the way, the uh, 18 pure Fluix, Fluix crystals are already done. So let's head downstairs to where I am building a new uh, inscriber area. So what I'm doing is I, I've set up a cache of the printed silicon. I'm almost up to a thousand of those. And what I'm going to do is set up the inscribers like this so that uh, let's place this like that and what I'd like to do is configure this with a ins uh, uh, engineering press inscriber and those should be the ones that are using diamonds so let's grab the uh, diamonds out of the uh, inventory. Let's, uh, how many? Yep, let's grab a couple of those and throw them into this hopper, which should feed, yep, into the inscriber. So, all I have to do now is load up the uh, kinesis pipe to energize these devices. So, I just realized I, I messed up my. Uh, <laughs> My placement, so let's uh, take this chest out of the way here and load up like such. Okay, one, two, whoops, that's that going to work? Okay, I see, so this is not going to work because I need to hook it in like this. Okay. So, what that should do is energize this inscriber to produce printed engineering circuits. And I'd like these to get sucked out the side. Um, the sides are always the completed side. And then that will take the printed circuits and place them down into this lower inscriber. And then that should dump it in the top slot, which should just energize to produce our uh, completed engineering processor and then dump that out into the chest. So uh, that whole uh, cycle, I need to get at least two of these engineering processors. There we go. So let's head back upstairs and build our first ME controller. So the ME controller it's going to need Skystone, pure Fluix crystals, two engineering processors. So the Skystone blocks are going to come from melting down Skystone, which should be over here. So in my lava contraption, I ended up uh, making a pump out into a stone barrel so I can dump uh, Skystone dust into... Uh, into the barrel, which will then produce sky stone. So all I have to do now is pump the uh, sky stone through a uh, redstone furnace. So let's do that at the machine area. So down on the end, let's close off that, drop in here. So, um, yep, so that's more than enough. There we go. So let's head upstairs. And dump everything into the inventory. And what am I missing? Two pure. Okay. Yep. Dump those in. And 
like that, I should be done. ME controller. So let's see if I can plug that in down here with my other ME devices. And bam, energized. Excellent. All right, next I'm going to do this two more times by burning down the uh, pure Certus Quartz crystals into printed calculation circuits using the Inscriber calculation press. And I'm going to do the same thing with the logic here by burning down uh, gold using, uh, let's just load this into the, the hopper. And that's going to drop the printed logic circuits into the top here, uh, which are going to generate out to the side. So now that I have some calculation circuits, uh, I want to make some acceleration cards because I know that that is going to speed up the the processing uh, speed. So let's let's create an advance card here with normal diamond and see if I can load. Uh, let's throw these in here and let's make um, four. So, okay, so the calculation. Oh, oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. All right, so let's make sure I actually grab the right thing this time. So, calculation processors, let's grab the engineering processors and some of the logic processors and head back up. And let's throw them all into the inventory system up here. So. Those, those, and those. Great. So with that, I'm going to make myself a acceleration card. So these guys basically speed up a whole variety of uh, AE2 machines. And they're pretty easy. It's just Fluix with a uh, advanced card. And the advanced card is a calculation press, which I've loaded up here. So let's try to make four of those and as soon as the uh, parts roll in let's uh, okay grab that and then make ourselves some acceleration cards there we go and so if I load those into the machine downstairs let's just make sure I grab some food for the trip then what that's going to do is drastically speed up the processing. So right here, we can see that, uh, you know, it's a little pokey. So let's take two of these and load them in, and look how fast that bar is now moving. It's great. So right now, I've now made the uh, item duck uh, process the, uh, the long pole in the tent here. So uh, likewise, let's throw in the other two up here. And that's just going to burn through and produce a whole bunch of logic circuits, which are going to queue up to be processed down here. So I can check in on this uh, chest later and make sure that I have all the uh, all the logic processors. But that's going to be a pretty good start to the uh, to the circuits that I need for the AE2 system. All right, the next piece I need is to actually uh, get the storage up and running. And so to do that, I'm going to build myself an ME drive. So now that I have the engineering processors, this is not hard at all. So let's uh, request those up and grab ourselves an ME drive. And now, of course, I have to have something to store uh, the pieces on. So let's uh, grab a... Uh, formula for a storage uh, component and the base one is just going to be the one the 1k the uh, 1000 uh, piece so let's grab one of those and of course I'm missing uh, the Certus Quartz crystals so let's head back over here to this machine and grab those out So drop that in here and the other batch I'll just throw into the generic holder and bam there's our 1k storage component and 
Uh, what I'll need to do is that combine that into a storage cell. So let's um, let's build that up. There we go, 1K storage cell. So let's load that into the ME system next and link that up by placing this next to the um, ME controller that I built. So you can you can build this these out to uh, seven in any direction. Now, of course, I'm going to be moving all these parts later as soon as I have a chance. But there's the first ME storage cell. Awesome. So now I need a way to access the uh, controller, and that's through an ME terminal. And so let's uh, whip up one of those next. And the basic terminal doesn't do much, but uh, what I will need is one of these illuminated panels. So let's make up uh, one of those. And of course, I'm going to need more quartz glass very quickly. So let's uh, let's do that with the uh, nether quartz, and can I just make a, a batch like this? Yeah, it looks like I can. Okay. So let's wait till those roll in, and then just whip up a whole bunch of of glass. And then uh, with the terminal, I'm going to need these formation cores. So with the uh, Certus quartz. Fluix dust and a logic processor. Uh, the Fluix dust is right here, which I got from grinding down the Fluix crystals. There we go. And I'll need a annihilation core as well. So nether quartz, same deal. And then I think that'll be all I need to uh, to make one of my first panels. So let's grab one more of the uh, logic processors out and done. So with that, I will uh, grab uh, some of my Fluix cable, head downstairs. And the Fluix cable has to be connected to the controller and then we have the panel itself. So with that, well, now I'm up and running with the terminal. So I can drop things into the terminal at this point, and they're they're stored onto the card. So here I have two two distinct items because they cannot stack, um, and that's just going to consume up to. Uh, well, I haven't quite ever figured out the uh, the byte order, but uh, I think the more limiting factor is the number of items for now. Um, since I don't have a lot of things to stack, but, um, yeah, so that's a pretty good first step. Uh, what I'm going to really need is the import bus as the next step, which, uh, looks pretty easy. Just another annihilation core and a sticky piston. Uh, I'm going to need a crafting terminal, which will be another ME terminal plus a crafting table plus a calculation processor. And of course, then I'll need the pattern terminal in order to create formulas, which will be, well, I'll need to make two crafting terminals then. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'll need to get on the road to auto crafting. All right, let's take a look at the next step of A2 crafting. So I have a crafting terminal, a pattern terminal. And I've been making pieces to whip up the crafting unit. So uh, I requested a couple of these. So I'm, I'm definitely going to need at least two. So let's grab in uh, more calculation presses, the logic processor, and the uh, iron ingots. Yep. And so here's a second crafting unit. So what I'm going to need to do is take a look down here at these blocks. So I'm going to need at least one crafting coprocessor. So let's put that back in and request the uh, engineering processor circuit. Bam. Okay. And let's throw that in and make ourselves a level one crafting storage at this point. So that means I'm going to need to make another one of these uh, 1K uh, 
uh, storage component. So let's whip up one of those and then whip up the the crafting storage. So crafting unit with the crafting spice makes one crafting storage. Excellent. So with that, let's head downstairs and hook all that into the system. And so I've just reloaded this guy here with a whole bunch more uh, pieces of equipment. And this is just burning through. And I have another 57 logic processors thanks to all my gold. And um, yep, so that's working pretty good. Let's uh, take a little shortcut over here. And uh, what we'll need to do is plug in the, the two processing units. So I found that the, they work best when they're adjacent to the ME controller, but really they can be hanging off uh, any kind of glass cable or dense cable. But uh, this multi-block will consume a channel just like any of the other devices. So the only rule is that once you make it more than one dimension, uh, more than one block wide, it needs to be uh, a cube, a uh, square. So uh, I can make a one by two, but then I can make a two by two by one, but then I have to make a two by two by two in order to uh, upgrade it. So uh, at this point, this should be enough for us to get started uh, with uh, auto crafting. So um, what I'd like to do is start to hook up some of the, the terminals. Now well, let's take a look here. Probably didn't want to put it there, but uh, let's put it underneath them and get the next pieces. So uh, what's interesting about the crafting terminal is uh, I can then use the inventory of the ME system to basically, well, craft. And the next important piece is the pattern terminal, which is what we use to kind of build the auto crafting formulas. So let's let's get going with a couple blank patterns. And these are actually pretty simple. Uh, the blank pattern block is uh, quartz, glowstone, and uh, we can use a non, uh, well, it says here either uh, pure certus or, or certus, uh, regular certus. So I'm just going to go with regular certus because, well, it's simple. So let's, uh, well, okay, I don't have certus glass. So let's make up a couple. Let's see what I do. Okay, quartz glass is also. Um, not enough. Okay, so, well, I have it right here, actually. Quartz glass, quartz glass. All right, can I summon the pieces? Yes. Okay. There we go. So at least make a couple of blank patterns. Uh, maybe the problem is that the stuff's not in the inventory, but, uh, what I definitely want to do is at least make enough blank patterns that I can replicate more patterns and, uh, but at this point, I'm probably going to be converting everything over to the AE system, uh, probably in between episodes. Uh, I've really had my fill of the logistical pipe system, so I just find that that's not very good at handling uh, large quantities of items. Uh, things just seem to route any which way that it, and it just doesn't. It doesn't seem to work the way that I I expect it. So. Um, okay, so I made a couple of ME interfaces. And the thing that I want to make next is the uh, storage bus. And this is what's going to allow me to hook the AE system into the existing uh, crafting or the existing uh, storage drawer system. And so I'm going to need a sticky piston and a regular piston, which I've already pre crafted. So let's grab one of those and one of those. There we go. And with that, I now have a storage bus. So let me grab some more of the glass cable and see if I can reach my network from here. So I have the um, controller right here, the drawer controller, um, but this is a pretty fair distance away. Um, let me see if I can hook this up. So I'll need a, a storage bus. And let's route it this way. Yeah, I'll definitely need some more uh, glass cable. So let me make a couple more of those. All right, and that should be everything I need to get the system routed into the storage bus 
over here. And so that should be touching the drawer controller, which should give it access to everything in the uh, entire uh, storage drawer network. And so for now, I can just leave this as input output, which means that using the ME system, it will now see everything within the entire uh, set, just as the logistical pipes can do. So, um, yeah, so I don't quite care for this GUI size. So, eh, never mind. I'm just going to roll with it. So, let's sort by the number of items descending. So, right now I can see that uh, I have quite a bit of nuggets thanks to the compacting drawers. Uh, I have 42,000 redstone, which is just ridiculous, as well as uh, 9,000 oak wood. So, uh, I'm pretty good in that regard, as well as the uh, some of the food stuffs, uh, 22,000 uh, wheat. And uh, so, yeah, so that, that's working pretty good. So the next piece that I'm going to want to do is to build up the, uh, I'm going to need to create a molecular assembler. Okay, so there's two more pieces that I need to make, and that's the interface terminal. So let's whip up one of those with illuminated panel and one of my ME interfaces. So request that up and done. And lastly, I'm going to need the molecular assembler. So uh, this is the block that's basically like the, the auto crafting work table, uh, like a crafting table. But it's going to use those, those uh, patterns to basically um, uh, craft anything that I, I request the system to craft. So let's uh, wait for this to roll in. And then, bam, molecular assembler. Awesome. So let's grab the uh, ME interface down and find a place where we can uh, build. So uh, I guess hanging off of here for now, um, I'm just going to restructure everything uh, in between episodes. So just to demo, what I'm going to do is take this ME interface and right adjacent to it, I'm going to place the molecular assembler. I can see the device is online thanks to the Wayla. And so it's going to hold uh, patterns in this slot. And I can either drop the patterns in directly or using the interface terminal, I can, uh, I can wire them in remotely. So if I right click on here, it now sees the molecular assemblers are connected to the interface and I can drop things right in. So uh, for example, if I want to make blank patterns, at this point, um, let's use a normal Certus Quartz. Okay, change of plans. We're going to make uh, the Certus Quartz, uh, <laughs> Quartz glass out of uh, Nether Quartz dust. So let's make a formula for that of the encoded pattern. We'll move up to the ME interface terminal and drop that in here. And at that point, I can now craft uh, the uh, quartz. We'll see that there's a little craft symbol here. So if I say I want 10 of them, it's going to need 12 glass, blah, 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 start, and drop all that into the, uh, the stored inventory. So let's then make the blank pattern formula and drop in the regular Surtis Quartz crystals. Done. And with that, I can now make my own blank patterns to replace the blank patterns that I am now crafting. So blanks, craft 10, done. And yep, so now I can auto feed my crafting system and just kind of loop around. So what I'm going to do in between episodes is find a new location for the AE2 system. Uh, I've uh, Unfortunately, put it in a really cramped spot. Uh, I'm going to start wiring up the uh, the machines and disconnecting the uh, the uh, LP uh, system here. And uh, yeah, so uh, if you could, please leave a comment or a like. Uh, let me know how I'm doing. And I will see you next time in Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock Expert Mode. Bye.